That's different. I really like that. Pichards or Pichards or Pichard. <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> it's Thursday. Hello, hello, hello. Mike is watching. Hey, Mike, how are you? Uh, so, Whiskey War, we're going to rocket through this today. It said the Prohibition got to start right here in the Buckeye State. That's the truth. Uh, some have suggested that the Prohibition roots, roots were what keeps our state kind of restricted when it comes to liquor sales. This is a very, very tough state to get new stuff into and to buy. You can't buy from out of state. It's illegal. You can't transport from out of state. It's illegal. Doesn't mean you're going to get prosecuted or stopped or anything like that, but if you do it enough, if you do enough of it, like volume, yeah, you'll get pinched. You'll get caught. <clears throat> and all that stuff's illegal in the state. And Ohio started off with what they call the Whiskey Wars. And it's the Whiskey Wars. That's why Ohio sucks. <laughs> hey, Kevin, how are you? Um, uh, so the Whiskey Wars started off back in the 1800s. There was a guy who was in the Columbus area, Westerville, I believe, and uh, he decided to open a saloon. And uh, there were some protesters. There were some snowflakes who didn't like it. And so uh, they came out and they protested and uh, he brought out a couple of guns and uh, they responded by burning his saloon down. And then they burned it down again. He rebuilt it and they burned it down again. And they're saying that's the beginning of when Ohio started to get involved in the whiskey wars. And it's what started, they say, prohibition. Ohio was one of the first states to prohibit liquor sales, uh, 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 drinking, imbibing, uh, making it, uh, selling it, uh, all that stuff. And then we were one of the first states to prohibit, and we were one of the last states to come out of prohibition too. So Ohio's kind of always had their undies in a bunch when it comes to alcohol, and they, can, they continue to do that, although things are starting to relax. Whiskey War takes that story back a little bit, um, and it talks about that first guy. His name is... Um, his name is uh, Henry Corbin. He's the one who built the saloon and, and, and got it burnt down. And that's kind of the impetus behind the photo that I took. Uh, now, I don't have the pistols like they have in the photos, uh, but I had a couple of uh, rifles that were real similar to each other. Uh, both of them Mosin Nagants, uh, which were World War II battle rifles from um, the USSR. They made millions of these things, and they never used them. They're still in Cosmoline to this day. Uh, which is some gooey Vaseline-like feeling stuff, and you really got to clean that gun out because that's how they have been able to preserve it for decades after the World War ended and these guns went unused. So, And they're really cheap. You can buy them for like 150 bucks. They're not very expensive. Anyhow, so that's what that picture was all about and why I tried to do it. Austin's watching. Hey, Austin, how are you? The Whiskey Wars continue in Ohio, uh, sort of. Uh, because the state restricts what can be sold and shipped here. I'm going to pour this now. I have had this open for a couple of hours. I actually took this and I poured it out into something else and then I poured it back in. Because I wanted... I, my palate's just been a little bit weird lately. And I wanted to be doing well. I'm glad you're doing well, Austin. Um, I wanted to give this a chance to breathe a little bit. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm glad you're watching. Uh, Whiskey War. Um, there was a law up until 2016 that you couldn't have, that you couldn't make uh, over 10,000 gallons of a spirit in the state of Ohio. Now in 2016 that changed to 100,000 gallons. That's a step. There was also a law that said that you couldn't have a distillery and a restaurant on the same property. That's changed. And since then, distilleries in the state of Ohio have exploded. Just like the wineries in the state of Ohio exploded, there used to be, you know, 40 wineries. And then by the time I was done doing videos for them, there were over 120. Well, now the thing has exploded with distilleries, and I think I saw there were over 60 distilleries in the state right now. Maybe 63, 64, something like that. So thanks to the, the relaxing of Ohio's... Uh, very tight ass, <laughs> we've been able to to grow the whiskey industry in the state of Ohio. And now I, I don't know if they're ever going to do anything like Tennessee did, where, you know, it has to be done a certain way in order to be called Tennessee whiskey. You know, it has to go through the Lincoln County process. It's basically bourbon, but it goes through the Lincoln County process. And that changes the way it tastes and looks and smells. Uh, and they use a lot of Tennessee 
ingredients. Not always, but that's that's one of the things that helps it become a Tennessee whiskey. Uh, even though it's technically a bourbon by by ingredients and by mash bill, at least in most cases. Um, this is a high rye. This is sourced by three different distilleries. I think all of them are MGP, but they are um, two of them from Indiana and one from uh, Tennessee. I'm I was gonna say Dickel, but I've I read enough that said that they were from MGP, all three of them. So this is a blend. It has been well received. This is one of three that are currently offered in the Whiskey War series. This barrel proof, then they have a double oaked, and then they have a regular one, which is like the, the baseline, it's 88 proof, which I've heard great reviews on the 88 proofer. It's supposed to be pretty good. This is the barrel proof. I'm happy to have found it. Let's see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Um, Adam Hines is the co-owner and master distiller. Jordan Heldman handles the restaurant side of the business. Uh, I guess they were beer lovers before getting into the spirit world. Um, High Bank has two Columbus, Ohio locations, uh, one in Grandview, where distilling takes place, and the other one in Gahanna, which has recently been expanded. That's basically a restaurant, but they do serve High Bank distillery products. They've got a vodka and a gin and, and a bunch of other, a couple of other uh, whiskeys as well. Uh, they are part of the uh, Columbus Distillery Trail. Uh, San Francisco World Spirits called Whiskey War the best blended whiskey in America in 2021. They do, they are um, distilling on site, but this is still sourced. Uh, it's 118 proof. Uh, sells for 55 bucks, 54.99 in the state of Ohio. It's aged at least four years, sometimes a little bit more. At one time, they did have a Spanish Madeira wine barrel finished whiskey, and they even had a double double oaked and a sherry cask way back when, but right now it's just the three that I know of. Reviews were mixed. Some people thought it would be a great mixer. Other people really loved it. Like I said, I poured this out, let it uh, air out a little bit, and then I've had the cork off for a couple of hours, so we're going to give this a shot and see how we do. Ooh. Okay, I love the nose. Now, I do like rye. This is supposed to be like an 80% rye, uh, and it's Lawrenceburg rye, and I tend to like the way that smells and tastes better than Alberta rye. Got a definite fruity fr forward nose. Quinn is watching. Hey, Quinn. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Very fruit forward. Some really nice vanilla on the nose. I'm getting, uh, it's not particularly oaky. I'm really looking for it, I'm not finding it. There's some nice, really, it's kind of sedate, it's the caramels in it, it's just there, but vanilla and fruits are definitely taking over this. It's almost got a wine-like palate, or nose. I'm trying to find what that fruit is. There's definitely some apple. But there's something else too, maybe maybe plum. It's the sweeter fruit, so it's not gonna be anything like your raisins and dates and prunes and things like that. All right. Hey Tom, how are you? Hope you're feeling better. Seems like it's going around. My son was ill this morning and I had a little bout this afternoon. I was kinda like, eh, eh, yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, mind over matter, really. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hundred eighteen proof. The bloom is very slow, but the finish is very long. So you let that sit in there for a minute, and it'll let you know it's there. The flavors are good. I, I, I haven't got a chance to really taste it because I wanted to get past that burn first, that bloom. Uh, but yeah, um, that's a, it's, it's not for a high rye. Here's, okay, here's what I was afraid of. When I hear high rye and I see 118 proof, I'm thinking this is gonna blow my head off. <laughs> um, it didn't. I can, it's there, the finish is long. The finish is nice. Okay, okay, let's get back into it. That's a pretty big pour. I might have to pour some back in. 
<laughs> okay. This will be all I pour tonight. I've got a place to go after this. Okay, that was interesting. I like this. I like this. On the very tip of my tongue and on the roof of my mouth in the front, I got some of those typical, hey Jeff, how are you? I got some of <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> Mike, when I see high rye and high proof, I hightail it out of there usually. Enjoy that large pour. Yeah, this has got a lot going on. Um, Mike, this has got a lot going on in it. Um, it's aged four years plus. Um, so it's not going to be a super young rye, and I don't get youth out of this. Um, okay, so anyway, as I was starting to say before, I... <laughs> um, the very front of my tongue, I got some of those Lawrenceburg rye notes, which are going to be uh, th those... The, the toasted cereals, the granolas, the, the grasses, the, the, um, the, yeah, yeah, that, you know, the rye, <laughs> the rye, the rye thing, <laughs> right? Um, Jeff says, about to start ripping out my stairs and replacing them. Might need a strong pour to help. You're going to miss every single nail in those stairs. You're going to, ow, boop, boom, ow, boop. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> You are just belt, hell bent on. Why don't you just bulldoze the house down and start over with as much as you're doing to the damn thing? Seriously. All right. Okay, so let's get back into it. That's really nice. Um, nail gun helps, yeah. Um, still very fruit forward. There's some really nice bright uh, notes in it. I want to, again, go back to saying it's apple. Maybe a little plum, because that's a brighter fruit. Um, hidden way back underneath it. Like tiny. Like Horton Here's a Who tiny and everybody else is holding the flower. Teeny tiny, microscopic. Very slight touch of mint in there. Um, that's giving it a brightness to it. Um, caramel is there, but not yelling at me. This, the vanilla is very nice. On the, on the palate, I'm getting more of the oak than I did on the nose. Um, it's still not huge. It's not a great influencer for the whole thing, but um, altogether, I think they've got a darn nice whiskey here. I am really glad I dumped it out and poured it back in and then left the cork off for the last couple of hours. I'm really glad I did that because I'm finding that was, especially these high proofers, I tend to be a lot more critical of them when I don't give them the time to breathe. The one I did recently, the Maker's Mark Crumbled Coffee Cake, I think is what it was called, I hated it. That's, that's harsh. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. I don't hate anything. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, anyway, um, I tried it again the other night, and miraculously, the flavors were there. I enjoyed it. I tried it again last night just to make sure that I wasn't off my rocker, and sure enough, I enjoyed it. So Maker's Mark is just one of those, I think, especially the private selection and the, the, um, the wood uh, finishing series that are higher... Uh, proof. I think those I just need to do like I did with this and let it breathe before I start drinking into it because I don't think I've been very fair to them. Um, that maker's pour is pretty good. Now the wood finishing that I did last week, I liked it right out of the bottle, neck pour. That was good. And that's rare for me with Maker's Mark. Uh, but that one I did like a lot. It kind of reminded me of 46 and I always like 46. So this one I'm glad I gave it some preparation and poured it out and just you know gave it a Gave it an opportunity uh, to breathe a little bit um, because I think it made a difference. All right, one more of these.
it's really really good um again right on the roof of my mouth and right on the tip of my tongue i'm getting those rye notes that's where they really present themselves and then the rest of the the experience takes over and gives me those wonderful fruit notes those vanillas those caramels and a little bit of mint um and then of course heat <laughs> Ooh, baby <laughs> all right let's go ahead and do this Calm it down a little bit. It's 118 proof and that was a one milliliter squirt. <laughs> so I don't feel bad about adding that much because it's gonna take a lot of that heat out. I just wanna see what it does over water. Um, again, the reviews were mixed. There were people that liked this the way it was, neat. There are other people that liked it on ice. I haven't gotten that far yet. What time is it getting to be? 17 minutes, okay. Give myself a little bit of time after finishing these. <laughs> I want to do this tip, this uh, this taste. I want to send this out to Grant. Grant, you know who you are. Uh, Grant's uh, going through it. He's a little under the weather. Uh, it's not COVID. I wish it was. Um, he's got an uphill battle, but he is facing it head on. Uh, and I think he's going to be fine in time. But this one is going out to Grant. So Grant, if you're watching, salute, and my prayers are with you. All right. Wow. Hmm. Knocked that down a little bit and it opened up some flavors. I'm getting a lot more of the rye, but I'm also getting a lot more cinnamon, which is something I did not get before. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> catching some cinnamon in there now. That was not there. Neat. And the, the sweeter notes have turned more darker. The honey that was there, and it wasn't a lot of honey, but it was there. Well, now it's darker and it's now more like a toffee. So it's still quite flavorful. And at 118 proof, even just one milliliter of water isn't enough to take down the heat. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> This is still quite the pour. Yeah, all right, one more. Let's try this bad boy over ice. That was probably too big of a pour. <laughs> it's okay. I'll have somebody else drive me. <laughs> I'm always skeptical about local. You know, I always kind of consider that Kentucky can do it better. You see the Kentucky Bourbon Trail and all the different distilleries that have been there for hundreds of years. And you look at this one that opened in 2017. And you're thinking, what's this got to offer that I can't get in Kentucky? Well, this is a very unique pour. There's, I, I can't think of anything else that I've ever tried that tastes like this. Now that I sit here and think about it, the Tennessee whiskey side of this has made itself known. The Tennessee whiskey side of this, and I can just barely pull them apart. The Tennessee whiskey has got the um, Lincoln County process involved. And I tend to get, depending on which Tennessee whiskey I'm drinking, I tend to get fruitier notes from Tennessee whiskeys Particularly, I'm thinking Uncle Nearest 1886. I get more fruits out of those than I do out of Tennessee rye or Kentucky rye or Indiana rye for that matter. So these fruit notes have got to be coming from the Tennessee part of the mash bill. And I'm just spitballing. I'm just throwing crap against the wall and hoping it sticks. But if you get a chance to pick up a bottle of this, see what you think about that. See if you think I'm off my rocker or if I'm pretty well spot on. Because, of course, I'm going to tell you I'm pretty well spot on every time. <laughs> All right. It's my finger. It's my drink. I can do what I want. <laughs> I hope you guys got a chance to try out my Christmas cocktails. There were a couple of them this year that were really good. Between two weeks ago when I did the apple cider and then last week when I did the Christmas Eve when I did the... Uh, four different cocktails, and last year when I did five different cocktails. There's so much content, so much! <laughs>
you can enjoy. I know it's not Christmas anymore, but some people still enjoying Christmas through the new year, you know, so go back and watch those and maybe try something different. Some of those are really good. The gingerbread one with the gingerbread syrup that I made, uh, that was the best one. That was the best. All right, so if I were Glenn Fry, I would be singing, the heat is gone. Uh, uh, it's gone, gone, gone. <laughs> All that heat's just gone. Rest in peace, Glenn Fry. On ice, I'm getting some pepper in the finish in the back end, um, back in the back of my throat, which is really nice, by the way. Um, but the fruitiness stayed. Um, it came back to honey. It wasn't toffee anymore. It got sweeter again on ice. Yeah, that's a fine pour. That's that's just it. That's just just a really really nice pour. Whiskey war. Um, they describe it as uh, the ingredients are at war with each other in the bottle or in the barrel. No, no, they are getting along famously. They are hugging and seeing kumbaya. Oh, they love each other, and this is a really nice bottle. You get a chance to pick this up. I could. I have never seen this locally. Um, but again, you know, it's allocated to certain stores within the state. I found this one down in Johnstown, of all places. I saw it on the shelf and went, <laughs> gimme! <me." laughs> so, um, Whiskey War, this is the barrel proof. They do have two others, a double oaked and an 88 proof. I would be very interested in that 88 proof. Double oaked, if it's done right, it's great. If it's too much, it's too much. So I tend to be a little bit more critical of double oak products. Um, this one I would be interested because the oak doesn't really show up until it's on ice and on water. Uh, neat, it didn't really show up. Uh, but this one, if you get a chance, it's only 55 bucks. It's, it's better than a lot of pours out there that are more expensive. So I'm going to give you a full uh, A-plus recommendation on this one. I don't grade them that way, so me just saying A-plus is not part of any general rating system. Either I like it or I don't. And this one, I like. So there you go. All right, I have no idea what we're doing next week. I don't think I've got anything down here to show off. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. Uh, no. Maybe this one. Mm, no. I don't have anything close by to show you. So sometime in the week, early on, I'll take a photo of what we're doing next week and let you know what it is. Hopefully it'll be one y'all talking about. Of course, typical KC, let me recommend something to you that you cannot find without driving two hours to find it. I didn't say it wasn't somewhere around. You gotta look for it. You gotta go on ohlq.com, look for it, see if it's around, and then before you leave, because that website is notoriously crap, um, call around and see if people do have it, and then ask them to set it aside. They may, they may not, they may. Say, I will be there in X amount of time, guaranteed, Unless I get a flat tire, pulled over, something stupid. <laughs> Let them know you're coming. You're going to come and get it. It's not allocated. It's just out there. I missed that one, Austin. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can find what you said. Whiskey War is distributed pretty widely within the state of Ohio. Great. Very good. Okay, thank you, Austin. Um, I, this, I haven't seen it. Um, but I'm in an area where we're kind of in a whiskey desert. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes throughout the state that takes forever to get here. For instance, Kevin, you might be interested in knowing this, mellow corn is now here. So if you want to try mellow corn again, correct your palate, it's here. Excuse me. A friend of mine uh, came over the other day, he said, do you have that mellow corn? I said, yeah. He goes, can I try it? That yeah. So I came down and got it. I had one open and uh, took it upstairs, gave him a little pour. He goes, I don't know what the, all the problem is. This is really good. Thank you very much. Landon's watching. Hey, Landon, we're just about getting done here. I'm sorry you missed it, but th the beautiful thing about this is that it's online forever. It'll be here. And uh, tomorrow, at some point, I'll take the recording of this 
and I'll do what I do to it. And I'll put it up on YouTube, which you can find at Beautiful Bourbon on YouTube. Now they have these things called handles. So the handle is at Beautiful Bourbon on YouTube. So, and we're getting uh, some nice subscribers on there. Can't wait. Mellowcorn. <laughs> Seen Mellowcorn at Pawkins. Yeah. I like it. It's not great. No problem. Rewatched your FAE one. It wasn't FAE. It was the wood finishing, which was BR001 or something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't FA, it was BR. Or, I think that's right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, you, you, I'm glad you watched it and thank you for that. Um, FAE, I didn't get any of those. Kevin has one, so you know, knock down his door and see if you can get one of his. <laughs> see if you can get a taste of one of those. So, Mellow Corners at Kroger on 6th just the other day. Yes, well, it's, it's almost always at Kroger there. It, I mean, it's, it's not hard to find it. Just like Crown Peach. I got talking to people about Crown Peach uh, the other day. About how the, uh, uh, Crown Royal decided to stop making the salted caramel because they didn't have enough product to create Crown Peach to the level of Crown Peach demand, right? People were hunting for Crown Peach. They were making a big deal out of it. It went huge on secondary. And the point of the conversation was that somebody was offering to sell a bottle of E.H. Taylor for a ridiculous amount of money, and it was on secondary, which I do not, I don't condone secondary, I don't like it, I don't, I don't buy on secondary, I don't sell on secondary, I don't do it. I don't like it, it's illegal, I don't want anything to do with it. So I, had, I was a member of a couple of groups, I got out of them. If you want to do it, that's up to you, on you, that's fine, I don't want to. But a friend of mine contacted me about that, he goes, what are people gonna do? I said, well hopefully, give it five, six, seven years, and all these billion dollar expansions that all these companies, Heaven Hill and Buffalo Trace and some of these other companies went through are gonna bear fruit and we can stop looking for the bottles that we want so badly. And people stop tatering these bottles and having you know, 10, 11, 12 bottles of E.H. Taylor on their shelf when you can just go to the store and buy one. Well, the thing that Crown Royal didn't do is they didn't increase production or production uh, capacity to help them continue to make salted caramel. Instead, they allocated the, the whiskey that was going to salted caramel and they moved it over to peach. Now you can find peach everywhere and that's the point. They should have increased capacity so they could have both products out there because they're both good, right? People love them, they, people want them. Does it create more demand when you can't get it? Yeah, maybe, but if E.H. Taylor or Blanton's or Eagle Rare or some of those other products end up on the shelf more regularly, I will hoard less and drink more. And I will buy them at MSRP. It's fair for everybody. Come on. I will buy more, drink more, and hoard less. And I think most everybody else will too. So I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping that, you know, for people who want to find that little horsey bottle, that in the next five, six, seven years, They'll be all over the place and all the hubbub will be over. Same thing for the Weller series and all those. Now, the one that I don't expect to grow a whole lot, but it sure would be nice, is George T. Stagg. Oh, I would love to get my hands on a bottle of one of, one of those bottles. That and the Thomas Handy. Oh my gosh. I've had them both. They're fan freaking tastic and I want them here in my collection. Not so they can gather dust, but so that I can drink them and enjoy them like I did Whiskey War. Florida has salted caramel all over. It's not discounted, just limited edition. No, um, you're right, but Crown Royal announced that they were going to cease production of salted caramel. So if they still have it in Florida, that's great. It's not going to stay there. It's going to be limited. Um, <laughs> see if there's anything else I'm missing. Oh, BRT. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Landon. Thank you for the uh, correction. Great. All right, guys. Well, we've been here for a half hour. It's time for me to go. Uh, again, I don't know what I'm going to do next week, but it's going to be something good. Mm. And if you have suggestions, go ahead and let me know. Send me a little, uh, little private message or whatever it is they call it these days. <laughs> and, uh, and let me know what you want me to try. If I have it, I'll try it. If I don't have it, I'll see if I can get it. And if I can't get it, then I'll do something different. That's the way it works. 
Uh, but again, I will see you next week at seven o'clock on Beautiful Bourbon. Uh, check us out on YouTube, that handle at Beautiful Bourbon. Check us, uh, it's the same thing that you're watching now, so you don't have to. Um, of course, we're here on Facebook. I would love it if you would share this. If you happen to subscribe on YouTube, I guess I need to have like a thousand subscribers to be able to do anything with that. So keep it coming. Um, I think I've got 49 <laughs> or maybe 59, something like that. I'm getting there. That's pretty good. I mean, for like a year on YouTube, that's pretty good. I'm happy. Um, uh, and then we're on Instagram. I'm starting to repopulate that a little bit. Uh, and so far, so good. It's funny, I put a picture on Instagram today and I got two private messages from people who said, post it here, post it here, or share it here, share it here. Like, why would I want you to post my content for me? Now, maybe I don't get it, but it seems to me being a guy who has been a creative his entire adult life, sorry, if my stuff is going to get attention, it's gonna get attention here, not there. Now, if High Bank decides that they wanna share my photo, good, they, they, I will let them do it, but High Bank is not one that contacted me. So they can just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that was really vulgar. I'm so sorry. All right, guys, uh, we will see you next week at seven o'clock. Uh, we'll come back with another one. You know, I'm, let me be the first to be cheesy and say, I'll see you next year. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry, but I'm not, but I am. <laughs> All right, guys, you have a great what's left of your week. Have a very safe and very fantastic happy new year. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Take care. Right.